Faculty of Arts and Education at Deakin University in Australia. Um, first, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you via this recording. It's very much a privilege for our faculty to be in partnership with the number one university in Vietnam. I'd be happy to do so. Now, it's probably important to note that there's approximately about 20,000 universities in the world, of which 2,000 get ranked. Um, Deakin University is in the top 1% of all the ranking, major ranking systems for universities. That includes the QS University rankings, the Times Higher Education World University rankings, and probably the most important ranking, the Academic Ranking of World Universities, or what's called the Shanghai Rankings. Why I say that's probably the most important one is that it's strictly data-driven, that ranking. There's no qualitative elements to the ranking. It's strictly based on the numbers. Now, according to the Academic Rankings of World Universities, Deakin is ranked number 211 in the world, which we're really quite proud of. In terms of Australia, Australia has 43 universities. We are ranked number 10 in Australia. You may have heard um, the group of eight in Australia. The group of eight are the top eight universities in Australia. So we're not in the group of eight yet, but we're getting close. In addition to that, and I think this is quite important, rankings are, are important, but let's face it, if you're going to a university, and especially if you're going to a university overseas where you know, it costs you a lot of money, the number one thing that you're concerned about and your parents are concerned about is, will you get a good job? And Deakin University has consistently been ranked very high for graduate employability. In fact, last year we were ranked number three of all Australian universities for graduate employability. The other thing that we've been ranked very highly in, and this again is by data, this is government surveys, for the last two, seven to eight years, Deakin University has been ranked number one in the state of Victoria and between number three and number six throughout Australia for student satisfaction. Well, uh, of course, students have participated in the, the dual degree program with the University of Social Science and Humanities at, uh, in, in Ho Chi Minh City and Deakin University in Australia. They get the bad standing in our program. So some of the subjects that we cover have already been covered by USSH, such as communication and everyday life, um, uh, news reporting, and other subjects as well. Um, you have to understand the structure of a degree at Deakin. So a de Deakin degree is 24 credit points, usually taken over eight credit points a year, over three years. However, students from USSH come in with eight credit points of advanced standing or credit for prior learning as we like to call it. So the students are going to learn a lot. They're going to get introduced to feature writing, uh, broadcast journalism, television journalism, um, news production, we focus a lot on that, um, local and community uh, uh, journalism, and most importantly, the requirement of an internship. In addition to that, so students take roughly, uh, I think it's about 11 credit points that they're required to do at, at Deakin in the journalism area. But in addition to that, they are required to do some core electives that are related to things like advertising, public relations, digital media. And they take seven credit points of subject matter in those electives. And then finally, in addition to that, and I think this is quite exciting for USSA students, they can take six electives from any discipline within the faculty, and even, in fact, some disciplines outside of the faculty. So, for example, if you're studying journalism, but you think that maybe you would like to uh, do photojournalism, you could take an elective in photography. You could take, if you were more interested in some of the film elements and television elements, the technical elements as it relates to journalism, you could take more subjects than that. Or perhaps you might be interested in studying international relations or international politics because when you become a journalist, that's the area that you want to focus on. There's a wide and collective range of options that students can use. I think the key selling point of our program is our connection with industry. 
As I mentioned, it is a requirement that students complete an internship. We will assist students with that process, but it's very important that the students themselves find their own internship um, uh, that works well for them and fits in with their program. But I think that connection with industry is very important. Um, we, we will be preparing students with a lot of practical skills. There are theoretical elements to the program, but also a lot of practical elements, and I think that's what makes our program very strong. They also, um, I should point out too, that we just recently opened a, uh, a state-of-the-art uh, digital newsroom. So students will actually work in that uh, digital newsroom to create a story, uh, edit the story, and report on that story. And that gives the students, again, really practical, hands-on skills that they, they would be using in, in their career. Yes, um, as a self-accrediting uh, university in Australia, um, and having our rankings within the top 1% of all universities in the world, um, Deakin degrees are recognized throughout the world. That's a, that's a really good question, and that's what parents and students always wish to know the answer to. Our, our students get jobs in a wide range of areas, media organizations, uh, publishing houses, uh, radio stations, television stations. Uh, increasingly, a lot of students are doing a lot of freelance work. Um, like I said, working in publishing houses, uh, magazines. Print media has declined a little bit, but it's being replaced by other platforms. Okay, so students in the University of Social Science and Humanities program here, they must complete the 36 credit points of the USSH program, successfully complete that program, and then they are automatically eligible to go into the Deakin program with eight credit points towards the 24 credit point Deakin program, providing, of course, they meet the English language requirements. And the English language requirements is the students must have uh, at least a 6.0 IELTS score with no band less than six. Yes, actually, students have two options. They can stay on campus at our student residence. And we have, I, I should put mention that we actually have four campuses at Deakin, uh, two of which USSH students can study at. Most students are probably going to choose to study at our Melbourne campus at Berwick, but they also have the option of studying at our Warren Ponds campus in the city of Geelong as well. Regardless, all campuses have on-campus accommodation. And I should point out that we don't have dormitories. Each student has their own lockable bedroom. And students can choose between having their own personalized studio apartment where they live by themselves, or they can be in shared accommodation with maybe four or six other students. In addition to that, we do offer an off-campus housing service for students who wish not to live on, on campus, but would like to maybe be connected with other students, be roommate, maybe to share a house or share an apartment. We can assist students with that. I think it's also important to note that our Warren Ponds campus and our Burwood campus are not in the center, center of the cities, but actually are, are um, just outside of the center of the city, located in residential areas. So that means that A, the cost of living is less expensive because they're not right in the city, and B, they're, because they are surrounded by housing estates, there's lots of uh, off-campus housing options for them. Um, yes, um, international students, including Vietnamese students, are legally entitled to work while they are a student in Australia, they can work up to 40 hours every two weeks. Now, it's important to note that 40 hours every two weeks, not 20 hours a week. And the reason for that is, is that the government recognizes that there are some times when students can't work, like maybe a week during exams. It's just too busy for them to be able to work. And then there are times when they don't have any classes, like maybe a semester break, where they could work 40 hours a week. So the government says you can work up to 40 hours every two weeks. Um, the unemployment rate uh, in uh, Australia, and particularly Melbourne and Geelong, is very low. So there's lots of opportunities to get jobs such as working as waiters or waitresses in restaurants, or servers, or other areas of the hospitality industry, 
uh, working in retail shops. Um, there, there's not a difficulty of finding jobs. And Australia has a fairly high minimum wage rate. So the minimum wage rate in Australia is just under $19 an hour, or if you like, around $720 per week for full-time employees. Yes, okay, that's a very good question and an important one because for students that study in Australia full-time for at least two years, they are eligible for what's called post-study work rights. That means that student, students, USSH students, after they have completed their studies at Deakin, if they choose to do so, could work in Australia for two years legally. Um, and the types of jobs that students get that graduate from our program, they've been in a lot of different areas. They've been in things like news agencies, of course, through journalism, television stations, radio stations, but also public relations agencies. We've had students work in publishing companies, and consumer business magazines, uh, advertising agencies, as I mentioned. Um, and, and also, as I mentioned earlier too, increasingly a, a number of students are working for themselves as freelance journalists. Yes, I do. When you come to Deakin, very simple, work hard, but have fun. It's really important that you maximize your experience at university. It's not all about the classroom, it's about the, the total experience that you have. It's about getting immersed in Australian culture. It's about getting to understand Australian people and, and, and what, you, what Australia is like. Make sure that you see part of the country. So work hard, study hard. I also recommend, try if you can, certainly hang out with your friends, your Vietnamese friends, but also make sure that you work hard and always communicating in English. Don't, don't run into that trap of when you're with your friends speaking in Vietnamese, because the important part of what you are doing to give you that global career is to improve your English language skills. So make the most of it. So work hard, practice your English, and have fun.